All right, guys, today we're going to talk about multiplying binomials. It's just one step further than working with the problems we were doing for homework on Friday and over the weekend. So it's very similar to what we were doing. So on Friday, we worked through problems that look something like this, h times h plus 7. Okay, so we multiply. We Remember, we distributed the h to both numbers. We ended up with h squared plus 7h. So now that we kind of get that idea, and that's what we're going to be doing today, we're actually going to be multiplying binomials. looks more like something like this. x plus 5 times x plus 3. So instead of having the original h times h plus 7, like we did in our previous example, just one number here, we have two numbers in front. It doesn't change what we did. To solve this problem, we distributed. We distribute h to both terms, h to both h and to 7. Well, here we're going to do something very similar to that. We're going to distribute each of these terms, term 1 and term 2. Oh, I meant to change colors on that. Term 2 to both of the numbers in the following part. One of the ways we do that, one of the explanations, is to use FOIL. FOIL is just a, a mnemonic device that helps us remember. It. First, the outer number, the inner number, done last. So it's just a way to kind of remember what the order. So I'm going to walk you through how to use FOIL and how to multiply binomials, and we'll get going. So when we talk about FOIL, the first thing we got to look at is identifying our numbers. Here's our first number right here. So that would be that first number, and that's on the outer side. So we distribute that one first. We're going to come up here, and we're going to say, okay, times x times x, and x times negative 5. Okay? So if I did that, I'd end up with x squared and negative 5x. Okay? So the second piece of FOIL is to come down and take a look. Okay, the inner number last. So this inner number right here, that's this one right here, distributed to both the other two numbers. So it would be 2 times x and then negative 10. So it should look, finally, like something like this. So if I put them all next to each other instead of having them separate, I have x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 10. So when we get to this point, we recall our terms. We recur that we anytime we have same terms, so we have these 5x, a negative 5x, and a positive 2x, we can combine these like terms to give us a final answer of x squared minus 3x minus 10. And that's really all we're doing. We're going to apply the distributive property twice. Okay, really that's all we're going to look at is applying the distributive property two times. So once to that first number and to both the terms, and once with the second number to both the terms. Okay, so we're sharing everything equally and evenly. So let's take a look and let's try some practice. So let me change to a color that's probably easier to see on your screen. So if we take a look at this first one, I'm going to go ahead and do 1, through 1 4, and 7, and then I'm going to ask you guys to pick 3 over here to do. Um, but let's take a look. So if we remember the rules and we follow the distributive property, x times x and x times 4. So I get x squared plus 4x. Now that I've got that one distributed, I'm going to do the same thing with the next numbers. Take this 2, and I'm going to distribute the 2 to both the x and the 4. So with that, I end up with positive 2x and positive 8. Then I'm going to come back here and distribute or combine any terms I've got that are the same. So these two are the same, giving me a final answer of x squared. Remember to write them in standard form, okay? Plus 6x plus 8 gives me that final answer for that problem. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Now this time I have a negative number inside the next problem. So you'll see up here I had two positive signs. Down here I've got a positive and a negative. And that's going to change a little bit of our rules, but as long as you remember that each term and each sign is related to the second term, you'll be in just great shape. So just like before, we're going to go ahead. Let me get rid of these dots so we can do the work. Uh, we'll go ahead and distribute the x. So I'm going to distribute my first x, giving me x squared. And this time, instead of multiplying x times 2, I'm really multiplying by negative 2. So I have two, negative 2x 
Then we do the same thing with our next problem. Our next part, we distribute the 5. So if I distribute the 5, I get 5x. And this time, positive 5 and negative 2 gives me negative 10. So now that I've got both of those worked out, and I combine the two like terms I've got right here. And now that I've got that, I'm going to go x squared. Negative 2 and positive 5 equals positive 3x. Remember, when you're adding uh, monomials, all you do is add the coefficients and leave the, the variables alone, this time minus 10. So there's my final answer. All right, now, one last style to look at. So we've got a negative this time and a negative. It doesn't change the idea that I'm distributing from w, the w and the negative 2 to the second two terms. It just remembers you've got to apply your negative law as you work through the problem. So let's take a look. w times w is going to be w squared. w times negative 3 is negative 3w. Do the same thing on top. So this time I'm going to distribute negative 2 to both the w and the negative 3 inside the problem, giving me negative 2w. And negative 2 times negative 3, this is where you got to be careful, gives you positive 6. So now that you have those two distributed, let's put them together. Well, these are the two terms I can combine because they share the exact same. So I've got w squared minus 5w plus 6. You guys can see the final answer. All right, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to ask you guys to do 3, 5, and 8. Okay? So pause the video, go ahead and try those in your notes, and we'll come back in just a few moments. All right, so let's take a look at the answers to these three problems. So we distribute k, and we get k squared, and positive 3k. We distribute the 6, we get 6k, and positive 18. Now we combine our two like terms. This time I get k squared plus 9k plus 18. All right, so you've got those two. So let's try the next one. This one, again, we've got just like number four, we've got a negative and a positive sign. But it doesn't change what we're doing. We're distributing both numbers into the second two pair. So m times m is m squared. m times negative 7 is negative 7m. Now we're distributing the second number. 3 times m is plus 3m, and negative 21. Combine my two like terms again. I get m squared minus 4m minus 21. And there you go. There's the answer. All right, let's take a look at number 8. Finally, number 8. x times x, still x squared. Negative 10, or sorry, x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Negative 10 times x is negative 10x. And negative 10 times negative 4 is positive 40. Combine those two like terms once again, and you get x squared minus 14x plus 10. I hope you're feeling comfortable now. It's just another application of the distributed property and working through that. So let's take a look. This time, instead of just having an x at the beginning, I'm going to have a coefficient on my x. So I've got a 4 on top of this number. It doesn't change anything we're doing except the answer. It doesn't change all of it. We're still going to distribute the first number to both terms and then distribute the second number to both terms. Okay. Hence the first outer inner last, the FOIL terms. So let's get to it. So 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times 3, this time, it's positive 12x. 7, negative 7x times x is negative 7x. And negative 7 times 3 is a negative 21. Here are my two like terms to combine. So my final answer is 4x squared plus 5x minus 21. It applies all the laws that we were working with before. All right, so let's take a look at number 12, and then we'll take a look at number 13 together. And then I'm going to ask you guys to try 14 and 15 in just a moment. So if we take a look at 12, still distribute. This time my coefficient is on the second term. It doesn't change anything. x times 5x is 5x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. 
negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x, and negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Combine the two terms I've got, I've got 5x squared. Negative 4 and negative 5 is negative 9x plus 4. Final answer. All right, let's try this one. All right, so this time I've got two coefficients. I've got three and both of, attached to both variables. Doesn't change it, I'm still distributing. All right, so 3y three three times 3y is 9y squared. 3y times 2 is plus 6y. 1 times 3y is plus 3y. And 1 times 2 is just 2. So when I combine both terms, that's these two right here, I get 9y squared plus 9y plus 2. You got a really good combination. All right, try 14 and 15, pause the video, and then I'll check back with you in just a second. And we'll work the problems. All right, let's check and see how we did. So this becomes 12a squared plus 18a. 2 times 2 gives me plus 4a plus 6. So when I distribute both of these, I combine my two like terms. I get 12a squared plus 22a plus 6. All right. We're in good shape. Let's check this last one. 28x squared. Oh, I need my 8, don't I? 28x squared. 4 times negative 2. This time is negative 8y. Ooh. Now I'm adding another variable into it. Doesn't change anything. Just follow my rules. 7xy plus, oh, I forgot my x on this one. xy. I end up now with 7xy. And then finally, I've got y times negative 2 gives me a negative 2y squared. Now, don't forget, this is where it gets tricky on this one. Okay, I've got x's and y's. Standard form has to apply still. So the greatest term has the greatest one alphabetically. First one is x. So I'm going to put 28x squared. It's the greatest term with an x. Now I look at these. I've got negative 8xy and positive 7. Leave me when I put 8 and 7 together, I end up with just 1. So minus xy minus 2y squared. Now, the reason I'm putting this x first is because x comes before y, and then that y is squared. There's my final answer. It's the trickiest one of the bunch, and I bet you didn't even get stuck. Way to go. All right, so today I'm going to have you guys try a few more. This time we're going to look at a couple. We're going to try a couple more of these just for some more practice. So I'm going to ask you to try 16, 20, and 18 in just a moment after I show you how to do 17. And then we're going to work on ones like 22. And I'm going to have you try those. So let's get started looking at these. Does it change anything? Nope. It actually looks more like the first problem. Well, let's take care of it. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Two, 2 times x is positive 2x. And 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So this time, the unique piece about this one is it has two like terms that are going to cancel each other out, and that's perfectly fine. So the final answer will be 2x squared, or sorry, x squared minus 4. Um, there's a special name for this. When we start working on these ideas, this is going to be called the difference of a square. Okay. So it just whenever you see something like this and you just see it written the final distributed version, just kind of have that in the back of your head that you've heard that's a difference of a square. And you guys will get a chance to take a look at those when we start working on factoring, which is the second half of our unit. All right, so pause the video and try 16, 18, and 20. And then we'll come back and take a look at 22. All right, let's give these a shot. 24h squared. Then we have, next time we have minus 8h minus a 9h plus 3, combining like terms, make that h look right, 24h squared minus 17h plus 3. Can't combine any other terms, so there's my final answer. All right, let's take a look at number 18. y times y, all right, we got y squared. y times 6 is positive 6y. Negative 6 times y is negative 6y. And 
negative 6 times positive 6 is a negative 36. So put these together, y squared, these two cancel, minus 36. Again, another example of a difference of a square. All right, last one. Ooh, no numbers, just variables. A little different. Oh, wait, no, it's not, because variables are just numbers we don't know. Actually, I think it makes it easier, personally. So x times x, x squared. x times negative y is negative xy. y times x is positive xy. And y times negative y is negative y squared. Okay. So again, I've got to combine my two like terms I can. Oh, they just cancel. So it becomes x squared minus y squared. Final answer. Good job. I bet you guys didn't even get looked at. And have a second look at that. All right, so number 22 is a little different. There is no second number. Or is there? Well, it goes back to remembering how to do what an exponent really is. So the exponent, here's our base. That's the exponent. What the exponent means, it just tells us how many times to write it. So if I'm going to look at this one, sorry about my poor handwriting, the signs to write. So it's really going to be x plus 4 times x plus 4. Well, once you recognize that's all this is, you're really going to work the same problem we've just been doing. We're going to FOIL. We're going to and distribute. So x times x is x squared. 4 times x, or sorry, x times 4 is positive 4x. 4 times x is another 4x. And then 4 times 4 is a positive 16. Leaving us with a final answer this time is x squared plus 8x plus 16. All right. So what I want you guys to do is try 22, or sorry, 23 and 24, and we'll check them in just a moment. Pause the video. All right, welcome back. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. 2m minus 5 times 2m minus 5. So let's practice our distributing. Neg 2 times 2 is 4m squared. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10m. 5, negative 5 times 2 is another negative 10m. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Let's combine our two like terms right here in the middle. 4m squared minus 20m plus 25. All right, let's check that. Let's take care of that last one. Okay, again, two variables this time. It doesn't change what we're doing. a plus 2b. I won't even make the Shakespeare joke. Yeah, I will. To be or not to be. <laughs> That's really the question. Is it going to be here or not? So distribute, I know I'm not funny, a squared and then a times 2b gives me 2ab and then another 2ab and then 2ab times 2ab is going to give me 4b, sorry 2b times 2b is 2b squared. <sighs> they make these jokes really bad. All right, I'm not going to make it again. So I put mine together. I've got a squared plus 4ab plus 4b squared, giving me my final answer right here. Now you guys are almost ready to tackle the homework. I've got one more section. So this time, what about multiplying a binomial, so a two term right here, times a trinomial? Do you think it changes? You're right. I know you were, you were answering out loud because you know, it's just normal. It doesn't change it at all. Instead of distributing it twice, I'm going to have to distribute it three times. So I'm just going to do the same thing I've been working in the distributed property again. So x times x squared, this time that gives me three x's, so x cubed. x times 3x gives me positive 3x squared. x times negative 6 gives me negative 6x. Okay, so I've got that done. My second half 4 times, neg times x squared gives me a positive 4x squared. 4 times 3x gives me a positive 12x. And then 4 times negative 6 gives me a negative 24. When I put both of those terms together, I'm only going to combine like terms, so that's where it gets a little tricky on these. 
So here's the term I can combine. Here's another term I can combine. But after that, those are the only two terms I can combine. So starting with standard form, x comes first, greatest exponent. So I've got x cubed. Now I'm going to add together my purple. So that's a 3x squared and a positive 4x squared. Gives me a 7x squared. We have a negative 6 and a positive 12. So that gives me a positive 6x. Finally, a negative 24. Alright, you guys have a good handle on this stuff. Way to go. So now it's time for you guys just to practice a couple of those. And we'll get going. So let's exam. I'll do one with you. I'll do this one with you. And then I'd like you guys to try number four. Okay? So let's distribute. It's going to be my new keyword. Let's distribute. So x times x squared gives me x cubed. x times 3x gives me a positive 3x squared. Remember our exponent law. 2x is x squared. x times negative 6 gives me negative 6x. Now let's go ahead and distribute this next part. All right, so that gives me 4x squared. Gives me a positive 12x. And then again gives me that negative 24. I just realized that's the same problem from our practice page. So how about I do number three instead? So let's try this one. So k, all right, so it gives me k cubed. And this gives me a negative k squared. And that gives me a negative 8k. Almost the TV. Now we distribute the 5. So negative 5 times k gives me a negative 5k squared. Negative 5, or sorry. Yeah, that's right. Negative 5 times k gives me a, times a negative k gives me a positive k. Don't forget, negative times negative, remember there's that hidden one there, gives me positive k in this case. And then negative 5 times negative 8 gives me a positive 40. So now I combine the terms I can combine. Negative k squared plus negative 5 gives me a negative 6k squared. Negative 8k and a positive k gives me negative 7k. And finally plus 40. All right, so we're really in good shape to work through these problems. All right, so I'd like you to go ahead and give number four a try. Go ahead and pause the video, and you can give it a shot. All right, now that you've got it done, let's walk through it. So m times m squared is m cubed. m times 3m becomes positive 3m squared. m times 5 gives me a positive 5m. 3 times m squared gives me a positive 3m squared. 3 times 3m gives me a positive 9m. And then 3 times 5 gives me a positive 15. Combining like terms again, well, these two have nothing to combine, so m cubed comes down here. Here's one term to combine, the second term to combine. Now that gives me a plus 6m squared. Here's my next term I can combine. Gives me a plus 14 m, and leaves me my last term as a plus 15. All right, I bet y'all are ready to tackle that homework. So you're welcome to, we're going to do one more of these and then we can tackle that homework. Let's try number seven. Uh-oh, it's different again. Wait, no, it's not. It's the exact same process, just applying it in multiple ways. So now I've got a 3x here. Well, taking that 3x, I'm just going to continue to distribute. You'll hear that I've said distribute 900 times. I'd like to see how many of you guys, if you ever sat back and counted how many I distribute, distribute I say. I bet that would be my new favorite word if I did. So 3 times 5 gives me 15x cubed. 3 times 2x gives me a positive 6x squared. And 3x minus 6 gives me a negative 18x. Let's distribute our second half. Switch colors just so, you know. It's a very colorful display. Okay, so this time I've got 1 times 5x squared gives me a positive 5x squared. 
1 times 2x gives me a positive 2x, and 1 times negative 6 gives me negative 6. So let's combine the terms we can, and we'll go from there. So can't combine anything with the x cubed, it's the only one, so it becomes 15x cubed. I can combine my x squared, which gives me a positive 11x squared. I can combine my x's, this time it gives me a negative 16x, and there's nothing to combine the negative 6 with, leaving me with finally negative 6 as my answer. All right, guys, you ready to go? So the homework is posted. You've got a copy of your homework already. But before I do that, I've got one last problem to work with you on, and it's right here. So this was the one we worked with the other day. It really turns out to be these two problems. So this first half is the area of the gray box. Okay. What I want to find out is what is the total area of the gray box if I take out this white box. So this is the white box right here. So this is just a multi-step operation. I've got multiplying binomial times binomial and a monomial times a binomial. So this was unit lesson two. This is applying lesson three and kind of combining everything. So let's take a second and put these together. So two times that gives me 18x. And you guys can see, oh, that's not what I wanted to do with it. Uh, two times 9x is 18x squared. And 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4x. Not, 7 times 9 is a positive 63x. And 7 times negative 2 is a negative 14. Take a moment before you factor this. I would combine my terms and treat them almost as completely separate problems. And then at the very end, put them together. Okay. So, But let's go ahead and factor this half. Let me go ahead and do a different color. So if I distribute here. I end up with 3x squared, negative 3x squared, and x times that gives me a negative 36x. Now, here's the thing. Because we've done all the parentheses, we really can work this problem as just one giant combining like terms concept. So let me get these color, get some highlighters and we'll get to it. My x squareds are right here. So I can combine these two terms. So when I do that, 18 and negative 3 gives me 15x squared. Now we take a look. Okay, I've got this. Oh, let me switch to my highlighter again. We've got a negative 4x, a positive 6x, and a negative 36x. So when I combine these, I'm going to end up with 4 minus, so this gives me a negative 2 right here, or positive 2x. Positive 2 and negative 36 gives me negative 36, or sorry, negative 34, get that eraser out, negative 34x, and there's nothing to combine with the 14, giving me a minus 14. There we go. That's our final answer. That is the area of the gray with the white square removed. So you've got one of those on your notes, on your homework. All right. Now you are finally ready to try your homework. If you have any questions, I'll be here. Feel free to rewatch parts of the video, and good luck.